Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to our live studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin and Lisa Leyland. Our first guest is in the house, David Pooches from Team Diga Pro Cross. Uh, we also have a um, couple other guests, uh, Tim Geisha is coming in and Tim Mateis from Standing Construct. Uh, but before we start with our first guest, David Pooches, uh, Lisa, here we are in Italy. Yeah. Let's go back to the British Grand Prix. Hold the British Grand Prix in March, they said. Yeah. It will never work, yeah. they said. It will rain, they said. And here we are in Italy. We were so lucky, weren't we, Matley and Vulcan's Ward. Yeah. But I mean, we can't complain because it hasn't, it's okay so far, isn't it? We can't complain. But if there's rain, we, it was going to happen sooner or later. Of so. course. But so far, so good. So fingers crossed. But the track is actually not too bad. That's so that's right. also uh, yeah. positive. But uh, look, Davy Pooches from uh, Team Digger Pro Cross is in the house. Davy, welcome to our studio show. Yeah, thank you. Round four of the FI Motocross World Championship. Um, let's talk in detail about the season in a moment. But you arrive here eighth. In MX2 after three yeah. rounds, yeah. Are you happy with that? Um, yeah, actually, I'm quite happy. How it's going? Uh, only in the second mode in Volkswagen, I had one uh, technical problem with the bike, so I didn't score any points while well, I was in six. So it could have been better, but um, about my riding and the results I've showed so far, I'm quite happy. Yes. Yeah, and obviously in Argentina, you got two top ten or well, two tenth place finishes. Um, is that the kind of thing that you needed to get the ball rolling just to give you a, a nice confidence boost because you had a, a long time off last year yeah for sure you know like uh, it's been uh, a lot of years with that i didn't race actually so um like the first gp in argentina i uh, started quite good with two times 10th for 10th overall um, i was quite happy with that you know because it was the first gp back after more than half a year so um yeah and then england uh, we finished uh, six overall mm. i finished two two times seventh for yeah. six overall, so uh, that was good. Cool. Well, like you mentioned, after the two tenths in Argentina, two sevenths to get sixth yeah. overall in Matley. Not bad for a Sandman. <laughs> Just got a little uh, clip here. How were you feeling that day? That whole weekend, actually? Um, actually, on Saturday, I didn't feel so good, but I got eighth in qualifying, so that gave me actually a quite good spot at the gate. And then the motors, I felt actually really good. Mm. I felt like if... If it will, will be uh, like l l later in this year, then I could finish maybe, yeah, for sure in top five, but maybe even better if I was on that track. Yeah. And you late. got pretty good starts as well. Is that something that you've been working on? Yeah, for sure. The starts are key, you know, because um, in this class at the moment, it's everything is quite close, so uh, you need a good start. And uh, yeah. What about the track conditions there? Because everybody, as we said at the, the start of the program when Matterley was mentioned as a venue in March. Mm. And they were, oh, it's going to be wet, yeah. cold, miserable. We couldn't have asked for better weather that weekend, could we? No, for sure. The weather was really good in Matterley. Like I expected when I heard um, that it was going to be in March. No, I, I thought it was going to be a mud race, but yeah, yeah. actually it was good, really good. Well, well, last week, obviously, we had um, the home race, uh, fifth in qualifying. Um, and obviously, you know, from that side, I guess you know you can do it. You know the speed is there. Uh, and it turned out to be a good GP. Yeah, for sure. Like in qualifying, I got fifth. I was riding for a long time in second. But um, like the problem is a bit at the moment that I didn't ride a lot the last years. And uh, I didn't ride uh, in the f on the front for four years, I think. So I need to get a bit used again, you know, to ride every lap, you know, in that, in that speed, you know, mm -hmm. at the front. But uh, it's getting better and better. And, um, yeah, like... Uh, in Falks had the first mode I got sixth and was battling all the time with the top five and the second mode I was actually closing to the top five when my engine stopped. So oh, okay. Well tell us a bit more about that because I was gonna say sixth in race one, uh, you look really comfortable, but race two you just disappeared like with four laps to go. We just didn't really know what, what yeah, happened. Yeah, it was quite sad, you know, but uh, yeah that's something what can happen and uh, actually the second mode I took a bad start uh -huh. and I came from fourteen I think back to seven or six and then together with Ben I was closing into the top five but then uh, yeah with like I think with 10 minutes to go my bike started to get slower and slower and then five minutes before the end it stopped yeah I was, I was gonna say actually it looked like I think it was uh, Alberto Ferrato yeah. passed you on yeah. one of that you could already tell the bike was yeah it was down. like yeah it was a bit sketchy to ride I was like like a, like a bit scared when it's gonna stop on the yeah. jump or something so what about the track what about the crowd last week again because we were expecting you know, bad weather after the snow last year, but um, everything seemed to be perfect. Yeah, it was a good weekend. You know, the 
There were actually a lot of people there, so uh, it was nice. And uh, for me, for sure, it was good because I was riding good, like it's getting better. Yeah, and yeah. to see all the people cheering, that's good. And um, in terms of a Grand Prix being at home, the last few years, the big attraction has been Jeffrey. Did you feel a little bit of pressure last week? Because no Jeffrey, no line. You know, the, the emphasis was on you and Brian and, uh, and maybe Calvin, uh, you know, to, to get a good result for the fans that did turn up. Um, actually, for me, not, you know, because um, like four years ago, I was quite a big thing. But uh, then everyone was cheering. and uh, But now, you know, actually no one knows me. Like, it seems oh, like that. Oh, sure. And, uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, but I mean... We know you. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, we but I mean, you. like, now, now it's nice to see, you know, how people are, actually. And um, like now I'm riding good again. Everyone is cheering. So that's only nice for me. And uh, But I didn't have any pressure on myself that Jeffrey was not there, that... Uh, that I had to do good. I just do my own thing and I try to be the best and come back as good as po po possible. Yeah. Well, obviously, we've just talked about the track conditions here. They're not too bad. This is a place you've done well on in the past. Uh, you won 1-1 here in 2014 in one two fives. I know yeah. it's a long time ago, but for a hard pack track and you know for you to win here in the past, mm. I mean, are you looking forward to riding here again? Yeah, for sure. I'm actually I'm always good there. Like uh, what you said in 2014, I got one one here in the one to five, and um, then I missed here three GPs to uh, to my shoulders, and then um, last year I finished six overall also. So uh, that was my best GP last year here. So uh, actually I love this track and uh, I like to ride on 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 this track. Okay, and uh, what are your expectations then for the rest of the season? Because obviously I know it's a new new team. Uh, you know, eight races you missed last year because of injury. Yeah. What are you expecting now for from the rest of the season? Yeah, for sure the plan is to stay fit. That's for sure the first plan. And um, like how it's going now, I'm quite close to the top five every race. So um, like every goal, like the goal for every race is to have a good start and try to be as long as possible in the front and uh, yeah, finish so high as yeah, Hopefully be okay. as possible. All right. Well, look, uh, David. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, David Pucci from uh, Team Diga Pro Cross Asfana. Uh, Tim Geiser is in the house. We'll talk to him in a moment. But before we do, let's catch up with some highlights from Balkan Squad. Here's uh, action from MX2 Race 2. MX2 Race 2, another flying start for Jorge Prado, hitting the foxhole shot line for the third time this season. Once again, Olsen was in there, his teammate just behind, Jed Beaton, number 14. Olsen quickly worked his way into second. The 29 of Jacoby was in third, Vial was into fourth. Alberto Ferrato, the EMX 250 championship leader, was making early progress. He was quickly into fourth, but then would lose positions just as quick. Olsen moved into second with that move on Jacoby as he went after the race leader. Vial was there in fourth place. Valandran, not too far away either. As he went by the 303 of Ferrato on the Maddie race in Husqvarna, who wildcarded this weekend. Vial was solid in fourth, but again, it wouldn't last. He was under pressure from Yago Kietz. Meanwhile, the SM Action MC Migliori Yamaha rider, Maxim Renault, was making mistakes. It wouldn't be the first time we'd see him get out of shape. Tom Vial fell from fourth position after being pressurized by the 193 of Yago Kiertz. He advanced another position as he started to carve his way towards the front. Vial started to fade. The second mistake came from Renault. A series of disappointments then as well. Freak van der Blis, number 88, Joaquin Pobetta. 426 of Conrad Muse. A disappointing day in the Netherlands for the Hitachi KTM UK rider. This punishing track, taking no prisoners. David Pucci's another flying start, but he came under pressure and had to succumb to the 303 of Ferrato. That move was for seventh. Pucci's would last four more laps. He would not score any points in race two. Yago Kiertz, though, was really getting the Belgian fans on side. He started to find his way into his rhythm and move on the 29 of Jacoby. Got him up into third place. He then went after the 19 of Thomas Olsen. The Landren almost over the handlebars of his HRC machine. 
as he too eventually advanced past the 29 of Jakovic to move into fourth place. The team HRC. Melandrin then comfortable in fourth, up front. Jorge Prado doing his thing. He went 1-1, but it was a photo finish between Yago Kitts. He launched the final jump. Made the move on Thomas Olsen to take second in the last 100 meters of the race. Olsen was third, the gap was 0.157 of a second. The overall this weekend then, Jorge Prado, Thomas Olsen, Yago Kitts on the podium for the first time. This season for Monster Energy, Khmer Yamaha. Rockstar Energy has father of Thomas Olsen, the championship leader, had to settle for second behind the Red Bull KTM of Jorge Prado. The day still has a championship lead, though, as we head to Italy. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our studio show here, live on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Maynard, and Lisa Leyland. Our second guest is in the building, or in our studio area at least, anyway. Uh, Tim Geiser uh, from Team HRC. Uh, Tim, welcome to our studio show. Thank you. Um, I guess the, the first thing we should ask is, this is almost like a home race for you, isn't it? Because uh, I know we're in Italy, but the Slovenian border, not that far away. Are you looking forward to performing here in front of the fans again? Yeah, definitely. It's always great to come here. Uh, Always many, many guys, many fans from Slovenia came, like you said, it's really close to Slovenia and uh, it feels like home GP even if it's not, yeah. but uh, it feels good. It have a good atmosphere and everything, so I'm really looking uh, forward to go on the track and uh, ride the track. Yeah, normally just uh, around the back of our yeah. studio here, all the fans <laughs> yeah. with the flares, yeah. that really adds a nice bit of color here. Um, but would you say that because of the support that you get here, is this one of your favorite GPs on the calendar during the season because you know they do come from not so far away yeah let's say it is uh, maybe the track is not my favorite one uh, like I said my wa my favorite one is Matale Basin but like uh, it's still hard pack and I I'm always uh, happy to ride here as well and uh, definitely because of the fans because of the all the people from Slovenia is uh, it makes this GP special so yeah it's it's always great to come him back here back cool Tim second in the championship <coughs> and the only rider to beat Tony this year are you happy with how things are going so far I mean yeah I I'm quite happy um, still a bit disappointed with the mistakes that I did like in uh, past two GPs in first moto Especially in Matele Basin, really, I was leading like six seconds. I, I was a little bit pushing too hard, trying uh, to make gap even bigger. And then I make uh, stupid mistakes. But, you know, uh, try to learn as much as possible from this uh, kind of mistakes uh, and try to not repeat it in the, you know, in the future. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Obviously, this was the second race. Um, I mean, we will talk actually about the first race in a moment, um, and also Argentina and Valkenswart. But here, you, when you crash in the first race and then you're in exactly the same position again the second yeah. race, it's important to learn from those mistakes, isn't it? And, <laughs> and you did that. Yeah, yeah. actually, like, uh, second moto, I say to myself, uh, I try to make pass immediately and then try to make a little gap and then control the race. And uh, I did that. I was, like, five seconds, uh, around five, se five seconds all the moto. Just on the end, uh, Tony pushed really hard, and then I tried to respond, uh, but on the end was like two seconds or something like that, so it was still like quite comfortable, and um, yeah, I was enjoying and having fun on that track, uh, you know, with the huge jumps, big speed, and uh, this is the tracks that I like it, yeah. yeah. I, I was going to say, are you surprised how strong he is actually still, Tony? Definitely, you know, like... Uh, He's a legend. Uh, he have a lot of experience and everything, so uh, he know when to push and uh, how to push. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, look. Uh, more from Tim in just a moment. Uh, just another quick reminder about our MXGP TV season package. Looks a little bit like this. Uh, so. Here's how you can watch MXGP in 2019 with our MXGP TV season package, which includes live and on-demand action from every round of the season, including all the qualifying races, the FIM Monster Energy Motocross Nations, WMX, and all EMX European races as well. And uh, remember, it's the only place to watch every second, every weekend, every, ri uh, every race of every GP live. 
Uh, also included is our studio show, hello, and our 26-minute highlights program, Behind the Gate. For more information, check our website, mxgp.com. Enjoy, right, warning. There's a little bit of crash footage now coming up. Only the back end, not everything, okay? Yeah, but, I uh, mean, we were talking about, you know, you mentioned your mistakes earlier, and a lot of people are talking about the crashes that you've had. Um, we've got a social media question from Deb Warren, and she says, we just got it here, uh, you have had some amazing crashes recently. How have you managed to survive, and have you any injuries because of this? And how does it affect you mentally? coming back from these kind of crashes. I mean, this one was Argentina. We go straight into <laughs> I mean, uh, Natalie. Uh, I mean, have you seen these back? Have you yeah, watched them back? I watch them, yeah. What, what, what do you think when you see them? I mean, like, uh, I watch it once and I didn't watch anymore, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you understood what happened yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know, there like, were no injuries, huh? Yeah, I'm just so thankful that yeah. I, I, I walk away from all these crashes. Uh, they were, like, big. Um, what but, happened uh, there, actually? You, Actually, it was like uh, they make, uh, you know, on the inside you have a jump and outside it's like flat line. Yeah. And then between the MX2 race and MX GP, our race, uh, they make a little bit flatter. And uh, in the roads they put a sand, was quite soft. And when I came in, you know, the, the leg just went off the foot back and just make Superman. So, mm. uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And obviously, um, I mean, we're thankful that you're still here, of course, because yeah. you're second in the championship, 22 behind Tony. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to, you know, go back to work today uh, sure. and this weekend. Obviously, the last time uh, that we saw you get a victory here was uh, in MX2, or your first real big victory here was MX2 with Jeffrey. Yeah. Um, are you ready to do the same kind of thing here in front of Tony's fans and uh, <laughs> just kind of upset the, you I'm know? I'm feeling good and uh, I'm ready, so uh, I will give my best, uh, definitely, I think. Starts are really important, uh, so try to make two good starts mm. to be up front and then uh, try to make an amazing race. So, yeah. yeah, obviously, the weather has been pretty wet the last few days. Uh, I arrived Wednesday night, it's been raining all of Wednesday, all of Thursday. Yeah. Yesterday was dry, <laughs> we had some drizzle this morning. How do you think it will affect the track? Because looking out of a window, everything looks it's pretty good. Bad. Yeah, I mean, like. It doesn't affect so much uh, because it's like really hard backtrack. <laughs> and here is the weather. Uh. <laughs> Tim Geiser is our weatherman. As you can see, there are clouds on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, like, talk us through what you see there, Tim. <laughs> it's quite cloudy, like, yeah. uh, but still, it's not raining. So, uh, I mean, uh, the track is quite hard back, so yeah. it it doesn't go so deep. Uh, so I think it should be good. But anyway, if it's gonna rain or it's gonna be nice, doesn't matter. We have to race, and I will give my best. And it's the same for everyone. So. And that's the thing. <coughs> the ground underneath is rock. So when the the loose dirt goes uh, to the side, you sketchy. have the rock, and you have uh, the ground in between the in the rock. Mm -hmm. It dries very quickly, doesn't it? As well. So, and if it <coughs> continues to rain and rain and rain, then the ground is just mush, not really heavy. Yeah. So that's also going to be better if, if it continues like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, uh, especially when the, you know, on the top, the loose dirt goes away and then we came to the stones. And then when it's, when it, when if it's going to start raining, then it's going to be really sketchy and slippery. Because already, like, uh, if I remember last year and past years, when was really nice weather, still when the loose dirt went off, was really sketchy and slippery. So... Uh, we will see, but like like I said, I mean, it's the same for everyone, so uh, I will give my best and then we will see. All right, <coughs> well, look, uh, Tim, um, we are out of time. Have a good weekend Thank and, you. Um, you know, say hi to all your supporters <laughs> this weekend because there will I be will. quite a few of them. <laughs> Tim Geiser, uh, we will speak <coughs> to it. another Tim in a moment. Uh, Tim Mateus from Standing Construct KTM. I can see he's just there waiting to come in. So before we meet him, check out some highlights from MXGP of Valkenswald last week. MXGP Race 2. MXGP race two, once again, Kai Rowley, the fastest out of the blocks. Across the foxhole shot line for the fourth time this season. Behind him, Tim Geiser was right in there as Gauthier Paulin was buried mid-pack behind the Sal and Jessica Konis, number 27. Paulin showing the importance of why you need a good start here. Buried right in the thick of the action as Kai Rowley led. Monticelli was second. Geiser eased into third, but then it was Monticelli who blinked. He fell, and he also was joined by Tonus. Tyroli up front. 
tried to make a break on the Slovenian. The HRC rider was never too far behind in what was a battle between the Hondas, the privateer Honda of the 89 and the factory Honda of the 10. As De Sao, once again, advancing forward after a poor start on his Monster Energy Kawasaki. Sean Simpson made a fantastic start on the number 24 RFX KTM, powered by PAR Holmes, but he got passed there by De Sao as the Belgian moved into fourth, while the two Rockstar Energy Husqvarna's were line astern just inside the top 10. Paul Land fell out spectacularly from seventh place whilst trying to find his way past the Geben Van Venroy Kawasaki of Alessandro Lupino, he would rejoin the race, but would only come home in 13th position. Antonio Cairoli going in search of his seventh overall victory here at Valkenswaard was in no mood for hanging around, and nor too was the 27 of Jesse Konis. He made light work of the 77 of Lupino as he climbed into sixth. Siwa was under attack on the Montreal Energy Yamaha. Two Kawasaki's behind him. Lupino and Lieber. Lieber finding a way past the Italian. That put him up into eighth place. But Jasikonis was the danger man. Two poor starts, but two heroic rides through the fields. That move on Simpson put him into fifth. He then had his eyes and his sights set on Clement de Sal. Could he find his way into fourth before the chequered flag? The answer was a significant yes. He capitalized on a mistake from the 25. De Sal thought about responding, but Jesse Konis had the line covered as De Sal went in search of his first podium of the season. Van Horvick came home in third in the race. There was no match for Tim Geiser or Antonio Cairoli, the Sicilian picking up his fifth race win from six starts this season. Tim Geiser came home second, edging out Jeremy Van Horvick and Jesse Konis. The overall belonged to Tony Cairoli on the Red Bull KTM. The Mondesal second, Tim Geiser third. But of course, Tony Cairoli extends his lead from eight to 22 with his victory over Geiser to South on the podium for the first time this season. Welcome back to our live studio show here on MXGPTV.com with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland. Our third guest is in the building, Tim Matthijs from Standing Construct KTM. Hi, guys. And uh, Tim, welcome to our studio show, round yeah, four for me. of the FIM Motocross mm. World Championship. Um, three new riders this year. Um, what was the idea behind the selection process? How did they end up at Standing mm. Construct? Of course, we're talking uh, Max and <coughs> Steve, and Monticelli and Glenn Koldenhoff. Exactly, yeah. Well, pretty early in the season, we knew that Glenn and Max were at the end of their contracts in their former teams. Yeah, uh, yeah we were interested in both riders. Uh, Glenn, we knew from his MX2 days. He rode for our team, like, you know, in 2013. Yeah. We, we won our first GP together, some great memories. Uh, and yeah, we knew what a great rider Glenn was, what a great person he was to work with. So uh, I absolutely wanted to have Glenn back riding for our team. Uh, there were a few teams interested in Glenn, so it was difficult. But uh, yeah, like we knew how it was to work with Glenn. Glenn also knew how it was to work with us. And uh, we had a few meetings and then we came to an agreement, which we signed in Indonesia. Um, what concerns Max? Pretty early in the season, I tried uh, with Max's entourage uh, to, to keep it general, uh, to talk about Max riding for our team. But uh, I tried it three times, three attempts. And every time it seemed like they were not interested in, in Max uh, riding for our team or, e or even talking about it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, then we decided to go for another rider. And uh, since our MX2 days, we always like to look for riders of who we thought that had more in them than what they showed till them. Uh, guys with potential, let's say. Uh, we did that with, uh, with Glenn, with Guillaume, we did that with Lieber. And that's how we uh, came uh, yeah, uh, talking with, with Ivo. And uh, that's how it went. And then, yeah, normally our team was full, two riders. Uh, KTM spoke a few times about Max, but first of all, I had the idea of keeping a two-rider team and then also the experience I had with the entourage of Max. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, very late in the season, at the night after work, I was uh, sitting on the sofa listening to a podcast of the MX-5 guys and there I, I heard that Max still was without the ride. So, uh, you know, uh, I love this sport since I was a kid yeah. and uh, it was just so, so hard to to believe that, that one of the best riders in the world, the guy who, who won less than a year before the biggest race in the world, mm. was would be without the ride. So I went to bed, couldn't sleep, got out of bed. Literally in 10 minutes I decided I have to do something. Sure. Yeah. And then I started sending emails to the team's most important sponsors of KTM. I knew that they were very positive about him. 
Uh, and then, yeah, later on the day, I got a few a few answers. Uh, everyone was very positive about him. I contacted Max, and it turned out that he didn't know before that we were interested in him. Yeah. So uh, that's how Max ended up in the team. Okay, oh, well, fantastic. let's talk about the riders in detail. Glenn then. Koldenhoff, after going 1-1 at the Motocross of Nations, how difficult was his off-season after his crash? And are you, um, are you happy with his progress so far? We've just got yep. a little clip here. Yeah, I mean... He's he obviously had a tough off-season, didn't he? But uh, here he was back at Matsley Basin, looking like he's showing signs of his uh, old self. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think everyone saw uh, that at Red Butt, Glenn was, uh, was just on another level, winning the biggest race in the world against the biggest riders in the world. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after the Motocross of Nations, he focused on the Red Bull Knockout. Uh, after Red Bull Knockout, he took some, some time off, two weeks off. Uh, and then, yeah, when he, he got back on the bike pretty, pretty quick, he had uh, that very nasty crash. Mm -hmm. uh, which unfortunately was, was not his own fault, which make, made it even worse. Uh, the crash had big, big consequences, and like, like we know, he had some very nasty injuries. And then, uh, yeah, we all know Glenn, he, he, he lives like an athlete, he's giving it everything uh, he can. And then like, uh, like two weeks before Argentina, he got back on the bike, he decided to go to Argentina, where he, he scored some points. Sure. In Metrally Basin, he already did eight plays. Also in Valka Swart, he's riding uh, for sure second heat, like we see, was not too bad. Yeah, uh, yeah he, he amazed us. Uh, uh, like now, the five weeks off, uh, which, which we will have after this GP, mm -hmm. will be good for him to, to try to, to get back to his former level. But, uh, yeah, you know, having Glenn as a rider, the positive thing ab about, one of the positive things about that is the fact that, you know, that you don't have to worry that he's not giving it a 100% or that he's not living like, like he should. Uh, for the sport, uh, you know, Glenn is, is, is so so strict and, and on, on himself and uh, we just know, we, we give him all the time he needs and he will be back for sure. And what about Evo? We just saw Evo a moment ago here in Valkenswald as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, there were one or two eyebrows when he was uh, brought into the team, but how has it been working with him? Because uh, we are running out of yeah. time, two minutes left. Yeah. Um, no, uh, he, he's a great guy, you know, uh, he came to Belgium, he lives in Belgium, works hard and like they say, hard work pays off. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and obviously, he's put in some good performance. Last week, he rode really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, but what about Max? Yeah, uh, you know, Max, unfortunately, in the first three GPs, he had a lot of bad luck. Uh, uh, Max is a great guy to work with. We all know how he can ride a bike. And then, uh, yeah, like the first little crash in Argentina, damaging the exhaust, Metrally Basin crashing because two riders crashed in front of him, Valka Swart, where he tangled up with his pants on his foot back. Yeah. Mm. All, yeah, some bad luck, but uh, uh, we know he, he will be there. Uh, if he needs he, the, the luck he needs, if he will have that, then for sure he will be the former Max. Yeah, I mean, this was race two. He made a move on Tony early, and he looked really comfortable for the first six or seven laps. Just a small lapse in concentration, yeah, like, maybe? Well, uh, if, yeah, maybe it was that, and then... Uh, it, it, in fact, it was a small crash, but the, f the fact that he got tangled up, which was quite funny to see afterwards, but uh, yeah, that, that caused that he dropped back to late in place. But uh, you know, yeah. we see him riding on practice. We, we also saw what he did in Valka Swart. He will be there. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's strange actually because the, the small fall that he had. Normally, you just you fall, you pick yourself up, you get back in second or third place. Yeah, but it is. He it was is, but with, the, with the foot peg in the pants. Yeah, the foot peg was into his pants, and uh, the torque pants are very strong, which, yeah. which we saw in Valka <laughs> but yeah. they are also elastic. And yeah, it was, uh, he, he, he was connected to his bike, let's say. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how are the guys feeling coming into this round? Uh, because we've had three in a row, Matali, Valka are now here. Yeah. Um, is there a little bit of weariness, a bit of tiredness kind of setting in or no, with everybody, no, no. the team, they're all good, they're all healthy, all, they're all strong? We all stay calm, we do what we have to do, the riders do what they have to do. Yeah. Um, like I said before, we, we give Glenn all the time to get back to his former level, which I'm 100% sure he will. Mm. Uh, Max, is, it, is it good having him back, Glenn, actually? Yeah, sure. Uh, the magic is still there? The magic is still there. You know, all the positive points that, that we knew that were in Glenn, they, they are still there. He has, he has the same goals as us as a team. Like I said, we know he's giving it 100%. We try to give him everything he needs to, to succeed. And uh, yeah, the, the magic is still there between Glenn and, and standing on Circadium. Okay, well, look, uh, Tim, thanks for coming by today. Um, Cheers, guys. All the best for this weekend. I know it's going to be a busy one with Evo. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I'm afraid. Let me have a break. <laughs> and he has it all again in five weeks' time in Mantua. But yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we are out of time here on our MXGP TV studio show. Thanks to Tim Mateus from Standing Construct, Tim Geiser. Um, and also uh, David Puchis. Uh, thanks to Tim Leyland and from Tim Malin here. Uh, have a great <laughs> We've had a lot of Tims on the show today. So uh, we'll see you again in uh, four or five weeks when we go to Mantua. But uh, we're back at 
150, I think, with the EMX 125, <coughs> uh, and then qualifying 445 and 530 for the MXGP qualifying race. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.